So our next presenter, a um, couple of days ago, an interesting fact was that we have 11 Colombians here uh, at IGLTA. And our next presenter is uh, from Colombia. And uh, I was reading on our awesome IGLTA app, uh, sponsored by Malta, thank you very much. Um, I was reading on the app that she's very, very impressive. Um, Ophelia was uh, listed as number 69 amo among the most influential women in technology. Uh, she is twice a TEDx speaker and Forbes placed her on a top 100 most powerful women in, on the Me in Mexico, uh, which also is impressive because she is a transgender woman. So welcome to the stage, please, Ophelia Pastrana. Thank you so much. Dougal, now with Otto Freudian. Sorry, I just um, have to find my way onto stages. So um, I'm gonna ask a really entitled question here. Does anyone know who I am? Yes, okay. Is anyone surprised? Who is this tall person? Good. I, uh, see here's the thing. Um, I'm constantly on the media, and what I will say today will probably come, uh, you know, as a surprise to some, and it'll be painfully obvious to some others. So if you've heard of this, if you've thought of this, just bear with me, because I am a very, very weird person in the end, <laughs> uh, and I do a lot of very weird things. And I'll just start with this. A funny thing happened a couple of weeks ago. I was actually being interviewed by CNN, um, which is kind of funny in a way, because I'm a YouTuber. But the thing is, here I am on CNN, and production walks up to me and they tell me, can you please tweet that you're here? I, in, you know, I'm thinking, it isn't you know, telling the world <laughs> about what we're doing your job? I felt scammed. <laughs> I figured, Something's missing, you know, I, it, it's, it's, it's like when you go to a restaurant and you have to cook your own food kind of sort of thing. <laughs> Why am I here? So there are some people that probably don't know who I am. And uh, I just, I can't stand here and just go around saying, yes, this is me. So I'm Ophelia Pastrana, I'm a stand-up comedian. I do comedy in Spanish, this is why I always bomb in English, don't worry. But um, I'm a physicist, actually, and I have a master's in economics, and uh, I've been an entrepreneur for all my life, basically. And the thing is, in fact, I graduated from my master's degree at 24, and I've been always, you know, this fast learner, grabbing onto anything I can, doing a lot of things, but anything that ever matters about me is my follower account. So I figured, what a waste of money. Should have just purchased a lot of bots and just gone with it. And also, I work from home, which is also weird. <laughs> you know, I just, this is, I'm sorry, I just laugh with this with my dad. Like, it's like, you know, we shouldn't have paid that degree. But the thing is, I've done a lot of media work, which is also weird coming from a physicist. I've done a lot of Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, a strategy and communications work for a lot of very big brands. And in the end, I became my own product. So um, I have been and done a lot of conferences. I have taught a lot of uh, you know, material and whatnot for, from this. And in the end, here I am talking to you guys. And when I'm at home, I play the guitar. So you could say I'm living the dream because I'm here. But in the end, and after and behind everything I do, I am a very, 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 very well-known transgender person. So yes, I was Forbes listed as the top 100 most powerful woman in Mexico, which is, again, an accomplishment, being a transgender and a Colombian woman. And I'm a BBC 100 woman as well. I'm the only Colombian woman on that list. <laughs> uh, 
and the thing is, I am always on the media. I do a lot of media work. I'm just gonna grind you guys onto that because I have this necessity to analyze and look and you know, be part of the media. And I only get 20 minutes here, so I'm just gonna give you one thing for you guys to think about. Because I used to be uh, Caitlyn Jenner's image in Latin America for a while, so I used to promote her, wherever you grab yourself on that. And then I'm also in the media as a comedian. But the thing is, because I live off of my numbers and my Twitter account and whatnot, this is where I'm special. And it's weird, because some people don't know who I am, yet I can stand here and say things like, you know, based on the follower count, who's that Chaz guy? What, Carmen who? Which is, you know, complex, weird, and entertaining in a way, because I haven't done anything special the way these guys have, you know? And the thing is, going back to CNN and sitting there and thinking, why am I doing this interview? I just came to this one conclusion about the way media is being dealt with and the way we are being represented in the media. Thing is, I've been doing seven years worth of interviews about who I am, about what I do, where I come from. And they always just, you know, hark up to the same questions all the time. And, and there's a thing where I used to want, I wanted to be on TV for so long. I worked so hard. I, I actually, I've done a lot of improv comedy, which is not obvious from the way I'm speaking on the stage. <laughs> I've done a lot of stand-up in front of a lot of very, very large crowds. I've done a lot of actual prompter work. I've done a lot of actual, you know, acting, formal acting work. And I just haven't been able to get on TV. And it used to be this thing that would just like grab onto me and say, maybe you don't, you're going about it wrong. And then maybe everyone else is just trying to get on TV and you're just like this tall transgender person. And then I figured, what's wrong with TV? So again, I'm gonna say a thing that's maybe painfully obvious to some of you guys. But I figured if you start to closely look at the way we're being represented in media, something's wrong. So this is from GLAD, and they have these numbers every year about how many you know LGBT folks are being shown on TV. This is the number. We have 26 transgender characters across all platform or platforms on TV right now. 26, which is an amazing thing if you consider, you know, if you think about the way or where we're coming from. But when I see these numbers, and being that I'm an online personality, I can think is. You know, I know more than 26 trans YouTubers. It, it's, it's so complicated to make whatever it is we're being shown or, or how we're being represented on, you know, on the movies, on the TV, compared to the way we see us online. There is a cultural difference between the way we're being shown on regular media, regular, to the way that we're being shown, or we are showing ourselves online. Because out of those, I mean, when I say I know more than 26, it's like I personally know more than 26 trans YouTubers. And when I say YouTubers, I mean people that, oh, there you go. I mean people that have millions of followers. So not all of these are transgender people, but just so you can grasp what kind of numbers the LGBT crowd or the LGBT people um, we can, we can uh, carry around online. Um, and it just, it goes by the millions. This, this is just like a random sample. Started like looking up my friends yesterday, grabbing a lot of screenshots, figuring, okay, so we have a million here, a million there, six million people there, six million people here. And this is just a random sample from my friends. If you compare that to CNN or BBC, you can probably ask yourself, BBC who, <laughs> you know? And the thing is, it's not only the amount of people that we can get to when you're online, and I'm talking about as a YouTuber, but it's also the way we talk about ourselves. Because media has this thing where they just constantly mistreat us. I, 
I can't stand against transgender characters in movies or in TV. I'm just tired of seeing all this like suffering and complication, you know? So this is so obvious to some people. And when I show this to people who are not in the LGBT community, they just, they're just generally happy. Yes, so there's a transgender person in the TV, you know? And then I tell them, yes, the story is about being transgender. <laughs> just, just to make an analogy here, this would be the equivalent of having someone who's African American just tell their immigration story, you know, their family story, and not just being casually whoever they are. It's complicated. I actually, I dislike this so much because I can't say no, you know? I, I mean, I would rather have this and have nothing, but they just, they keep killing a lot of LGBT characters. This is truly, statistically speaking, I think something like 90 something of all lesbian characters in TV die. So this used to be news about two or three years ago and it's been kind of fixed. But then while we're going about fighting this or talking about this or discussing this on TV, you know, we have this BBC, NBC, uh, BB, uh, CNN, who situation. So there's one thing that I want you to consider and it's the fact that online we are showing ourselves as we are. Have you ever gone from this like very, very openly LGBT bar to this like very calm, quiet, toned down place where probably no one is gay and wondered, where am I? That's what I get when I jump from the internet to the TV. And the message is different. The message is culturally different. Because of my media work, I coach a lot of people and I tell them what to do, how to present themselves, which is not painfully obvious from the way I'm presenting myself on this stage. Then again. English is my second language. <laughs> um, but the thing is, I just, I tell these people pretty much how they should talk about being gay online. And it's a complicated question because there are no role models. Whenever I coach people about their media presentation, the way they talk about themselves and whatnot, for other reasons, I can just grab, you know, like someone from the 90s and say, look, this is what they were doing before. But I can't find anyone who represented us in the 90s, openly gay, TV presenter, openly transgender movie star. It's complicated. Maybe we have one number. <laughs> Maybe we have two people that can just like, oh yes. But it's not the way it is today. Because we are doing something on YouTube that did not exist before. And the thing is, it's like going from that openly gay bar to that one very toned down restaurant. I, I just, I can't state how important this is. If you want to talk to LGBT people as marketers, it is so much easier to do it online. The thing is, the way I see it, this could be a news show. Does that make sense? Some of my friends look like this every day. And, and, and this, is, this is something that I just don't see happening on TV right now. Maybe it will. Maybe there's this one show, you know? And, and the thing is, the thing about that is this, this cultural drift has made everything that happens online so much more powerful. I could probably argue that that's what brought me here. I haven't been on TV yet. There's one show that has made a lot of difference in the way they show transvestite people and has changed the narrative. So the way I talk about this when I'm in Mexico, I tell people that in the 50s and 40s, women had to fight for the right to wear pants. Maybe before that, not too, not too much before that. And then nowadays you have all these guys that are fighting for the right to wear uh, skirts, skirts and heels and not be less of, not really less of a man. This discussion is going on right here, but it's happening on YouTube. And if you think about the way that we connect with people, um, YouTube is a 
is an obvious choice for the way that we want to talk to or about us. This is from a study. Finds that LGBT youth would just generally go to online places, especially because this is where we talk to people that are like us. If you live in a town that ha doesn't have a lot of you know, transgender folks out there or whatnot, you will find someone online. And this is my life. I, I talk to a lot of people um, who have had any complications in the family or whatnot. And, and in the end, um, you will find that LGBT people spend more time online and devouring all this content on, online. Think about all those 26 trans people that I know of. Think about how many friends have you known online that you don't see on the TV. So I kind of gave up with trying to find spaces that will get me on the movies or will get me on TV. Because in the end, whenever I do things on Twitter, I get invited to CNN to talk about myself being on CNN, which is weird. There's a lot of, a lot of thought about this. And I just, want to give you guys this one message. Just want to say it's different. Just want to invite you to online. You probably can see that, but here's another thing that happens online. There's a lot of civic participation. So, in, so, so, so the way I work online is I connect with people from their name, from who they are. Whenever I see this on TV, I don't have anyone to share with these kind of sort of things. And I just want to bring you guys a small invitation to go online. Because there are so many, sp so many spaces, so many places where you can do things that you cannot do on movies. I have friends who are teaching people how to transition online. I myself talk about how to do, go about doctors. And, and I, I find myself meeting a lot of people online because they just look for me. I'm doing music online. And I just want to give you a small comparison, because I just think about the culture and the way we talk about ourselves. And as a marketer, I think this is very important. Just want to show you guys two videos. One is an actual TV ad, and one is a made-for-internet ad. Just want to make you guys see the difference, because probably I'm not as good as conveying it right here. But I want you guys to keep and hold and grab onto that. So you, you probably sold on the internet for a reason or not but you're not sold on the fact that the message is different. And if you can uh, just roll the first video. This is me. This is me. This is me. This, this is, is me. me. I'm sorry if that was the sponsor or not. <laughs> but here's the thing. So what do you see there? Someone telling their story, their trans story. On the surface, that's a beautiful thing. Being that this has been done for like seven to eight years, I'm kind of tired. However, this has to be shown. Okay, and this is the way that everything is being done for general media. Can we show the second video? And then you can tell me if you can find a cultural difference. This is made for, for the web. And this is in Mexico, by the way. So if you think of Mexico as a background place, here you go. 
I know all of those people. <laughs> That's what I wanted to leave you guys with. I only get two more minutes. And the thing is, I can't leave the stage without letting you know that the internet is a fabulous party. And TV is stuck in the 90s. I, I no longer want to bring them horror. I just for forgot about them. And I work online, and I want you guys to work online as well. And that was that. Thank you. I wouldn't want anyone to have questions, but if you do, we still have like a minute or two. What's your name? I'm sorry. Paul. I'm sorry, where? Uh, NYC. Okay, NYC and Kapal from it. Yes. Oh. Right. So, so, right, so, so your question is, are mainstream media programming everyone just they're talking to the lowest common denominator and forget? Yes. Um, I thought about that uh, quite a lot. I've actually been on several media outlets to answer the same questions because they actually forgot that I was there before, <laughs> which is weird. So I usually tell them, yes, the last time I was here, we can show that clip. I would say that they are actually, I mean, there are LGBT people working at these companies. You know, I, you can't be that malicious and go around thinking that they're doing this out of evil or spite or whatever, but they are, to a degree, I feel like they are using us to talk about a sad story, and they're actually delivering message with that, especially in the transgender community. Because when they interview me, they, sometimes they go to my house, and they just tell me, can you just stand in front of the mirror and apply makeup, and I tell them what has that to do with transition, you know? I would say that they just don't know what else to talk about. And, and since, again, since we're coming up with a new message ourselves, we don't have any role models. We, we can't tell the, you know, tell this one new story if we're gonna count on someone, I'm sorry to say this, but who is not LGBT to tell it. But that's just my opinion. Thank you. Do we have any time or any other questions? I'm gonna be here all day. This is not something a comedian should say. <laughs> 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 but thank you guys. You guys are amazing.